بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق Okay, uh, Inshallah, we'll start. Um, so we stopped last week at this hadith. Yes. Last week we stopped at hadith number 504 where it said that a man kissed a woman unlawfully meaning uh, that woman was not his wife and then went to Rasulullah and informed him. So Rasulullah then Allah revealed and offered prayers perfectly at the two ends of the day and some hours of the night. Really good deeds remove the evil deeds. The man asked Rasulullah is it for me? Rasulullah said that no, it is for the for entire Ummah. So as I mentioned to you last week, a quick recap on that, that uh, that when you do certain sins, right, there are two or three ways of doing uh, of freeing yourself from the from the from the, the sins. One is to make tawbah definitely, right? And the second thing is that do excessive amount of good deeds. The more good deeds you do, right, the more chances are that your evil deeds will be replaced by good deeds. <clears throat> right? Now there's an ayah in the Quran which says that a person who had done tremendous amount of bad deeds, right? Tremendous amount of bad deeds. He makes tawba, right? And he is sincere in his tawba. That what Allah will do is that each of his bad deeds that he had done, right, in his days of ignorance, Allah will convert them into good deeds. So this is why, you know, a person who is a big criminal, we should not give up hope on him. We should keep on making dua for him and Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. So here also, Rasulullah said the same thing. Now this ayah is the ayah that Rasulullah Sallam quoted here. The ayah is in the Hasanat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, here, here it is. The ayah is in Surah Hud. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ طَرَفَ النَّهَارِ وَزُلَفًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Right? Allah is saying, establish salah, meaning pray salah five times. Right? So here, this ayah is quoted because it gives us the timing of salah. What are the times of salah? So as I say, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ طَرَفَ النَّهَارِ you establish your salah at the two ends of the day, which is Fajr and Asr. Right? Now, Wazula from in light. And in some hours of the night, which is Maghrib and Isha. Right? What about Asr? Asr is in Surah Al Baqarah. Half is ala salawat wa salatil wusta. Wusta is Asr. I'm sorry. So, so this is these are the timing of salah. Now, if I if you give me a minute, there's one point that I wanted to mention about one hadith that we covered last week, and I thought later on that I should have mentioned it. And that is that, brother, in in hadith number five or three, which talked about Umar's death, shahada. Remember that. That there's a door between the fitnas, right, and the time of Umar. And when, and that is, that door is Umar. Once he is, he goes from this world, the fitnas will come like, like flood water. So, 
remember that this, these fitnas that happened at the time of the shahadat of Umar will continue till the last day of this universe now. In fact, it will increase. Right? So, don't think that the, the next generation is going to be better than my generation. No, it is not going to happen. The days that you are witnessing today, no, these are better than next year. Okay? So, do not think that morally, religiously, people are going to improve. There is no chance of improvement now. Human beings are going to go down in moral values, in ethical values, in their, their religious practices and all that. And I think I don't need to explain that. You can see, when you can see everywhere, every, in every country it is so, every country. So one of the big fitna, my dear brothers and sisters, that would increase and keep on increasing, and it will increase tremendously, many folds, is killing. <coughs> killing. The people will kill each other as if it's not, it's not anything. And this will increase. People will go to such an extent where people, and this is Hadith Shri, by the way. Haraj or Maraj. Yeah, Haraj. Right? And that, you know, like this happened last week in the US. Three boys, yeah, Americans, they just killed a person for fun. And this poor man was from? Australia, who came here to play football? Baseball. baseball. And they just kill him for fun. These youngsters ask, why did you kill him? Well, for fun. Now that is the level of our akhlaq, killing for fun. Second is that you are killing and you do not know why you are killing. I mean, there are some motives, somebody told you to do so, but that person who told you to do so, you know, ask him, why should I kill other people? Or people are getting killed and they do not know why are they being killed. What was my fault? I was going to get yogurt for my mom. It happened, you know. The other day, 17 year old boy was shot in Lahore, and this poor boy was going to. His sister gave him her cell phone to go and put some minutes in it. He was going, two people came, what's your name? Shot him dead right outside the, the door. And his sister is still scolding herself that why did I ask my brother to go? And he was the only son of his mother. And she has kind of lost her balance, mental balance. So, now this is something that is happening across the board. In Syria, when the, the, the Syrians use the chemical weapon, thousands of people are lying dead. There's no trace of blood. There's no trace of blood. So, finished. I mean, the whole area is finished. So, these kind of uh, inhuman acts are going to increase, not going to do decrease. Because there are 7 billion human beings on this planet right now. It has never, this, ne this number has never been such a big one, ever, since Allah created Adam Islam. So now 7 billion people breathing together, eating together, things are going to happen now. Okay? And maybe that time is going to come when there will be a nuclear war. And chances are that India or Pakistan will start that against each other because both of them have nuclear weapons. And if that happens, then you are talking about nearly 30-35% of the world population is living in India and Pakistan. So, I mean, these kind of haraj, what I'm saying, is, are going to increase. And it is going to increase many folds. So, w when we read that hadith last, last week, that the fitna will spread after the death of Omar. What I'm trying to say is that brothers do not think, and this is where I disagree with some people who say that, that when Muslims become true Muslims, then we'll go to non-Muslims for, for dawah. Until Muslims are weak Muslims, we cannot go to non-Muslims. This is absurd. 
this means that you are saying that no more dawa to غير مسلمين because that is Quran Hadith tells us that we are going to become worse right so you know non-muslims needs dawa muslim needs taskeer reminders yeah reminders right we need reminders وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Muslim do not need da'wah. Muslim needs reminders. It's profitable. Yeah, but غير مسلمين, non-Muslim, need da'wah. أُدْعُوا إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ This is da'wah إِلَىٰ Allah. Okay? Another thing that we need to understand is that the worst Muslim will inshallah also go into Jannah. After maybe some time in Jahannam, Wallahu <laughs> Allah. Maybe Allah will forgive him. Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. As long as a person has Iman, that person eventually will go to Jannah. Maybe he'll get the Shafaat of Rasulullah Sallam. Like I told you last week, Rasulullah said, Shafaati li ahlil kabair. Rasulullah said, my Shafaat will be for people who have done major sins. People who have done minor sins, Allah will forgive them, inshallah. You know, without the Shafaat of Rasulullah Sallam. So as long as you have Iman, Chances are that you will go to Jannah. But a person like Christians out there, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, people out there who have no Iman whatsoever. Allah said that they are going to go to Jahannam. So we should be doing Taskeer for Muslims. Reminder, like, like this is also Taskeer. You know, we are trying to learn, remind ourselves about the saying of Rasulullah Sallam. And the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? So this is taskeel. But when it comes to da'wah, da'wah is to non-Muslim. So this just uh, argument that when Muslims would be 100% uh, practicing, then will go to non-Muslim, that is completely wrong. It will never happen. And uh, by the way, it has never happened in the past. <laughs> it has never happened in the past either. They give an example of Allah. Majority Muslim and then they go to No, no, no. Majority Muslim, but doesn't mean that if a country has majority population is Muslim, is still, that those Muslims are all 100% awliyaullah. But there is still non-Muslim there that's affecting the So, the thing is that we should do, because Rasulullah Sallam did both the things together. What's the authenticity I don't know. It's very difficult. <laughs> That's why right. anything about Ali Karmala, unless those ahadis are in, have been. Yeah. Yeah. There are other hadiths part there. Four bar, four dots. Four dots. Yeah. yeah. Abu Bakr, Omar, Osman. I don't know. I mean, there are many things. For example, this one that Rasulullah said, and even who, whose protection, friend, I am Ali is the, is, Ali is his friend as well, Maula Ali. Right. Mawla Ali. So Rasulullah said, if I am somebody's Mawla, Ali is his Mawla as well. Meaning, if I am somebody's friend, Ali is his friend as well. So that's why Shia people always say Mawla Ali. So, but then again, we have to check the authenticity of these uh, hadith. That's authentic. That's in uh, Sahih Bukhari. Is it Sahih Bukhari? Yeah, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari. Anyhow, so but but the sayings of Ali Karamallah you are are tremendous and there are so much so much uh, uh, so much to learn from about the saying of Ali Karamallah Wajoo. Next week I'll I will just talk about some of his sayings, but I'm not going to cover all the sayings like 15, 20 only, only. But the rest of it you can go and uh, search on books and inshallah you will be given. But the last thing that I would like to quickly mention here is about Khawarij. Because remember Ali Karamallah Wajoo had fought against Khawarij. Now people ask what were Khawarij, who were Khawarij? Now Khawarij were people who were extremists in religion. Right? They will go against the Jamhur. Huh? Yeah, I mean they will be extremists, extremists. So they were destroying deen. Now remember they had long beards, they had amamas, they have they, they would pray five times, they will be the first people in the, in the masjid, they would populate the masjid, you know, their woman would be in strict uh, Parada, all those stuff, you know, but they were the worst people, you know, 
worst fear. Ali Karmallahu had to go and fight against these Khawarij because they were destroying the deen. There was no moderation left among them. Okay? So he had to tell them to stop this extremism. Things that were nafil, they will upgrade it to fall. So uh, too much extremism. So when uh, uh, Ali became a Khalifa, the, the Khalifa, he would try to teach people that you know Islam is all about moderation. What is this extremism? But they will do different things. So they went against Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ali Karim Allah. So his uh, nearly five years of Khilafat, Ali was full of trouble. Because Khawaii made his life difficult. So he had to go against against uh, Khawarij. And uh, so this Khawarji uh, school of thought is still prevalent some, some place where huh? yeah where where you know yeah, the extremism is being practiced right so Ali went against them you know and he fought against them and he, in fact five years of his life uh, as a Khalifa you know he had to face these Khawarij so just read about it I don't want to go into the detail but the, the, this group is called the extremists and uh, uh, it has no place in Islam. Now, uh, he, for Ali Krabbalah had some dispute with Aisha. I'm not going to do that, yeah. that unnecessary detail. Uh, he fought against Aisha. That battle is called jang e jamal He fought, and then there's jang e Safan. Safan means that there were so many Sahaba who were in, in this, in this, uh, with uh, Ali. Some of them were, were, were with Muawiyah, right? Mm -hmm. So they, there was unfortunate war. Well, it happens, you know, when there's so much thing, too many things going on. There was this, one, which I don't want to talk about it, you know, just read about it. Uh, uh, but I would just, one thing that I would, love, I would like to say about this is that when there is some dispute among Sahaba, right? Do not talk bad about a Sahabi, right? They were sincere people. Some of them were wrong in their... Uh, in their views, right? But they were sincere. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have not criticized any Sahabi in Quran. <coughs> Although Allah knew that in future they are going to fight over some issues. But Allah said, till the day of judgment, radiallahu anhu wa radu'an, wa kullam wa adallahu al husna, ulaika hizbullah, Allah said. I am happy with them. Although Allah knew that this is going to happen, right? So Allah, Allah had forgiven those Sahaba. So you and I should not criticize. So I don't want, want to go into the details, so you can read that. But uh, next week, I will go into the details of his sayings. That, so that next week, please tell me that after I'm finished with these four khulafas, whom do you want me to talk about from 9.15 to 9.30 every week? It should be a, like, you want a sahabi or a tabi, any particular tabi, imam, whatever you want, huh? Ashram of Bashar, so inshallah, I do what I There are a few, uh, there are two brothers. Uh, um, brother, sister, uh, the, let's make dua that I have got a text message. Uh, well, there are two brothers, both of them are from Morocco, and uh, they are in, um, let me read this. Uh, in fact, one of them has cancer and the second one has some strange disease. He was such a strong man. I know him and I know what happened to him. He's, he had different surgeries all the time. And here and now he's in a very bad shape. So both of them are in Dr. Phillips Hospital. And they don't have much family here actually. So one Moroccan brother met me yesterday and said, Hamza, if you can make an announcement, if some people can go and visit him because nobody visits them. So I promise that I will make an, an appeal. I will go myself, inshallah. And if you can go and hear this. Okay, here it is. Um, one brother's name is <coughs> Munir Salwi. He is in room number 4019 at Dr. Phillips Hospital. And another brother, brother Mustafa. Yeah, he's in room number 3039. So again, one brother, his name is 
Munir Salvi, he is in room number 4019. Uh, he has cancer. The other brother, Mustafa, who had different operations done and he is uh, in a bad shape. He is in, in room number 3039. Uh, the brother who had cancer, he has no family here. Okay? He has no insurance either. So he's in a very bad shape and his brother was saying that Hafsa, if some brothers can go from the masjid just to visit him, it will make him feel good. <coughs> I will make this among the Maghrib as well. So we should go and so make dua for them. Uh, make dua for Salim Khandani sahab, uh, wife, she is in the hospital. She has some operation done, please make dua. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sallim wa muhammad wa ala sallim wa muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma ta salam wa salam wa barik wa rabbana wa ta'ala iti yada zilani wa liqam. Allahumma alina al-haqqa haqqa wa al-wazukna tiba'a. Allahumma alina al-baqila baqila wa al-wazukna ishtinaba. اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا حام إلا فرشته ولا مريدا إلا شفيته ولا مريدا إلا شفيته ولا مريدا إلا شفيته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها يا أهل الرحمين يا الله سبحانه وتعالى دعوة من الناس هو السك يجب أن يشفع يا الله سبحانه وتعالى 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 يجب أن يشفع يا الله uh, on the ilm of Quran hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this gathering and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the true followers of Rasulullah wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun al musayim alhamdulillah wa ta'ala.